I think moving abroad doesn't have to be uh, painful. Moving abroad taught me to be uh, quite open-minded and uh, open to diversity. When you go and live in other countries, you start to appreciate your own country as well. But the biggest is perhaps uh, to find someone that uh, guides you through the process of finding new people in different places. I, I came back a lot braver. It has taught me to never take anything for granted, but everything can be worked out and, and you'll get there eventually. I think nearly six years ago, 2012, if that's the right maths, and moved to Nairobi, Kenya, for my husband's job. When we did finally arrive in Nairobi, nobody was there to meet us. We didn't have a contact number, so we were there with my two-year-old son, and it was quite hot that day, tired from the travel, and I said to my husband, where are we going? Do you even know where we're going? And it was that sudden feeling that we've moved our whole life here. And at the start, we don't even know where we're going and there's no one there to meet us. And we didn't have a phone number. I mean, looking back, that's such a simple thing that could have been fixed. First week for me was just the most isolating feeling of no SIM card. So I couldn't phone anyone. I couldn't phone my husband to see what time he'd be home from work. He went straight into the office that day. No transport, no decent car seat. They lent us a car seat, it wasn't fit for purpose. And it was just, yeah, it was just like, what the hell have I done? <laughs> First week, was that was the feeling. The whole thing was really hard, really, really hard, much harder than I ever thought. Obviously, the cultural difference is moving to a country in Africa. I'd never, never been to Africa, but I had travelled a lot for my work, so I'd travelled a lot in Asia, so I, I wasn't nervous of the travel, but just moving your whole family and life to another country is, is no mean task and there was no support there was no kind of I think I was saying it before if we if there'd just been some kind of consistent liaison person from the start to the end and all the way through and, it, and also for when we came back um, that could have made a massive difference things like I, I backpacked all my you know when I did the packing I, I did all the packing myself and backpacked and then the packers came and said we can't take it backpacked <laughs> and we do the packing for you so I'd spent days doing all of that stuff I came back a lot braver. You know, it's heightened security. You're living um, in a compound. You are um, the terrorist, the Westgate terrorist attacks happened while I was in Nairobi and that was my local shopping center. So I had a near miss. I was in a different shopping center the day at the time when it happened with my two kids on my own. Could have easily been there, you know, so it's that what if, what if. And after the Westgate attacks, all of the security that was already in place just heightened. Um, which restricted what you could do at the weekends. You didn't tend to go to shopping centres at weekends anymore with your kids. We lived in Nairobi for three and a half years. We were really trying to extend it to five because like I said, the final year for me was just fabulous, loved it. You know, really started to feel settled and actually it was really tough to leave. I would say when we came back, that was also one of the hardest times and the emotional turmoil of leaving a place that you just settled in. You just started to feel home. You know, your kid, my, my son had made some really great friends at school. I'd made some really great friends. My work was taking off. The connections that take so long to build were starting to kind of come good. And um, we were loving it. And then we had to leave. <laughs> so, and then the year back here was really tough. And again, there's no support. There's no ongoing hand-holding or support. 120,000%. You know, when I met Pauline and heard about this, this company, I just said, I wished, I wished you'd been around when we moved because even just having one person, one point of contact through that whole time to talk through, who, who is experienced enough to be able to say, right, let's fix this problem, let's solve this, let's go here, do this, get you a SIM card before you go. Simple things, simple things, but simple things that make a huge difference. So I'm a personal stylist and my passion is shopping for pre-loved and I call it treasure hunting, so an experience. When people move over here, I can meet up, we could, it'd be a really nice way to connect people, you know, people who don't know each other and perhaps 
build friendships. We can go shopping. There's an antiques market that I can take people to. There's loads of amazing charity shops um, and pre-loved dress agencies and turn it into an experience. So go for lunch, go to a nice coffee shop and you know, really kind of create a community event that brings people together. Yeah, so I think what I can do f um, for an expat, as, especially because I've been there and experienced it, I'm a people person, so just make them feel welcome for a start. Um, but also, um, you know, it's not just personal styling, clothes, shopping, it's kids wear, it would be homeware, you know, furnishing their home. And, and probably I would go above and beyond and it would just be about helping them feel settled. It's such a good name for the company.